encrypt everything, compute anything. Our mission at Archeum is it to allow everything to be encryptable and at the same time allow for anything to be computed over that encrypted state. So hi everyone, I'm Yannick, co-founder and CEO at Archeum, and today I want to introduce you to what we're doing at Archeum. Archeum is the first of its kind parallelized confidential computing network, and what we are trying to do is to usher in a new era of data protection, data ownership, and trustless execution. Confidential computing allows the protection of data in use by allowing operations to be performed across that data without having to decrypt it first. And so decentralized confidential computing allows for a completely new kind of transformative shift, both for the blockchain but also for the traditional computing space. And if we have sensitive data today, let's imagine sensitive patient data spread amongst multiple data owners, um, there's this inability to gain insights from that data um, because the data is so sensitive that this data should not be shared. But with decentralized confidential computing, what we're able to perform is a unification of isolated data under a single shared function with predefined rules while maintaining privacy. Um, and so in this healthcare example, what that means is that we can have sensitive data, can use that sensitive data for federated learning to utilize models for um, disease prediction without having to share that data. So this is the big concept that we're working on and this entire system goes full circle. So it also allows with decentralized uh, confidential compute to build secure execution environments without any single trusted entities involved. So all processes in this example with model prediction um, both the training and the prediction and the model itself can remain encrypted and no data has to be shared, while at the same time completely new insights um, from that data can be extracted for everyone. And so the evolution of confidential computing really is the same as for blockchains in general, moving away from trusted systems to more decentralized systems. So the starting point really is trusted execution environments, which have been heavily used both in the traditional computing but also the blockchain space. And they provide um, dedicated hardware with security and data privacy promises made by single trusted entities, like Intel with their Intel SGX platform, for example. But the issues with those systems and heavily relying on the systems, as we've seen with blockchain infrastructure, really um, is manifold. So it starts with the complexity of building secure software systems on those platforms, high maintenance and hardware costs, and significant performance overheads. But the most problematic issue with those platforms is a fundamentally flawed trust model. And this trust model requires anyone, depending on those systems, to ignore and overlook um, a myriad of exploits, vulnerabilities, and attacks we've seen in recent years. And we've seen hundreds of those exploits, even leading to entire blockchain ecosystems, leaking all of the data they tried to protect um, by relying on those systems. So it's clear that solely relying on trusted manufacturing practices, on a long linear supply chain of many single points of failures, where attackers can target individual points and cause the entire house of cards to collapse is not the right way to go. And so what's, um, what could make sense is utilizing zero knowledge proofs, which are already uh, used a lot in our current um, decentralized infrastructures. Um, they, as a new concept, allow a prover to convince a verifier about the, proof of, uh, the truth of some statement without having to reveal the statement itself. So essentially the verification of information and execution over that information without the need of disclosure. Um, but what we are trying to achieve is really an autonomous execution platform. And so they are not really suitable for that. Zero knowledge proofs still require one party to keep possession over some sensitive plain text data. And what we want is to be able to outsource any sensitive computation to someone else. Um, and so the next concept as a cryptographic family of protocols that could make sense is fully homomorphic encryption, which allows to perform computations over encrypted data without having to decrypt it first, which is an amazing concept, 
but at the same time, what we've seen are severe practical limitations of this technology. And so, in practice, we experience slowdowns, um, many orders of magnitude above plain text execution over, um, over data. And so, um, we can, it's not unusual to see 1,000 to 10,000 times slowdowns for operations, and that's highly problematic. If we want adoption of privacy-preserving technology, we cannot force any developer or any customer to pick solutions that are efficient but not private, and so it can't be this solution at this point in time um, due to those um, technology constraints. And they go beyond those normal slowdowns. They also require complex bootstrapping operations to be performed regularly in order to reduce noise that accumulates um, due to repeated operations over, over the encrypted state. And what's also important, there's no native selective disclosure with this technology. So data remains encrypted, but what if we want to reveal something, we want to reveal information about um, the result of some computation. We want to move that information and use it to perform some public action on a public ledger. That's not possible with this technology on its own. So trust needs to be introduced in this technology in order to facilitate that. And um, there's also no out-of-the-box verifiability. So verifiable compute and selective disclosure besides the performance overheads is something that matters. And so for us, the logical solution is to instead use secure multi-party computations. And secure multi-party computations allow a set of participants to jointly compute a function over distributed private data without having to share that data. Um, and so the inputs used in such a multi-party computation can remain private. And this is the exactly same concept if you think of the entire data, the distributed data, as the encrypted data. And with multi-party computations, by them utilizing secret sharing as its primitive, so splitting secrets into secret shares and then distributing those secrets, those encrypted blinded values, those essentially random values to all participants, and then them being able to perform local operations over that data, and performing communication-based operations, and at the end, combining all of those secret shares back together in order to form the output, and optionally, um, in this process, also decrypt it. Um, and by extending multi-party computation and secret sharing with threshold encryption, what we're able to do is to have a set of computers that run a multi-party computation take any encrypted state and run computations over it, because um, threshold encrypted data can be used in the computation and decrypted in, inside of the blind multi-party computation by using the actual threshold keys that can be used to decrypt data as private inputs that remain private for the computation. And so multi-party computations come with trust assumptions, and there's essentially a decision to be made between two kinds of protocols, honest majority and dishonest majority protocols. Honest majority protocols, due to their higher trust assumptions, often are way more efficient. Um, but on the other hand, the dishonest majority trust assumption is unbelievably powerful in the decentralized setting because it forces you to only have to trust a single participant in a computation to be honest, and honest means in this context not be maliciously collaborating with all of the others to undermine confidentiality. And in a permissionless setting, anyone can become an honest player. And so that's why we picked protocols from the dishonest majority family, but with the drawdown that they usually are less performant. Um, and in our network, we were able to solve those issues. So we start off by combining different MPC protocols different backends um, with the dishonest majority trust assumption. And for local operations in those multi-party computations, we use semi-homomorphic encryption. So a subset of the computations, uh, of the operations in the computation can be performed locally without any communication required between the peers, um, but not all operations. And those operations that we allow for, um, for homomorphic execution by each player locally, um, are very efficient. And those communication-based operations, we are able to um, increase the performance 
by making use of recent advancements um, in MPC protocols from the pre-processing um, family. And so those MPC protocols essentially split the computation into two phases, a pre-processing phase and an online phase. And the pre-processing phase is completely independent from the online phase. And it generates correlated randomness that can be consumed during the online phase. And um, it's independent of the algorithm or the inputs that are being used in this online communication. And this leads um, to a point where the online phase execution is close to plain text execution times. The only thing that needs to be ensured is that this correlated randomness exists at this point at, at which the online execution should happen. Um, but the execution time is blazingly fast while maintaining confidentiality. And we, what we added also to the equation is a censorship resistance and sort of guaranteed execution mechanism. Um, because dishonest majority protocols have this amazing trust assumption that only one honest player is required. But at the same time, by default, they only come with the so-called security with abort, which means any dishonest player can DDoS the operation by not communicating or sharing invalid data. And everyone will see that um, something went wrong and the protocol will abort, no output will be produced. But in this distributed setting, we want guaranteed output production if, if we want some execution environment that should autonomously execute computations um, gets the task to run a computation. And we were able to do that by adding so-called cheater identification to our protocol. And that adds um, a little bit of overhead to the pre-processing phase by creating commitments. And then once such an abort scenario is identified in the online communication, um, the corresponding party can be identified. And taking this cryptography and adding to our stateless compu uh, computational network existing blockchains, we are now able to have a collateral staking and slashing mechanism, which enforces correct execution of those computations. And non-participation or invalid um, participation in the computations will be penalized. And so, um, what we are building with this technology is an open permissioned net network of computation nodes. And those computation nodes are being clustered into subclusters in that network, um, all with the dishonest majority trust assumption. So always one honest player um, is the trust assumption required by the um, end user. And we associate those clusters with so-called MXEs, MPC execution environments. And those are virtual encrypted environments that exist on those existing blockchain networks that we use as consensus and state layers. And within those environments, one can have persistent encrypted state that can be used as input into those computations, but also can be mutable state. So those computations directly can have side effects on, onto state. And the entire orchestration of the computations occurs in a parallelized mempool because the network does not have this dependence on some global state, everything can be parallelized. So cluster-wise, we can parallelize computations, but even for single nodes, there's no waiting on some other computation to finalize. A node can run a very complex five-hour long taking computation while at the same time process other computations. The only limiting factor per node is the communication bandwidth and essentially the speed of light that, um, yeah, that constrains this node. And so with this setup, we allow for anything to be computed. So um, we have this pure computational network, which allows for the creation of confidential on-chain applications. Those confidential on-chain applications, however, are an abstraction over what this network is processing. So one can build a wrapper, if you will, by creating such an on-chain execution environment, which when computations should occur, um, triggers this um, computation processing in our network, and then the network settles back the output, the verifiable output, to this dedicated smart contract, which turns Arcum in this autonomous execution machine. But what's important is that the network itself has no notion of what a smart contract is, or what an asset transfer, or a public key is. All the network does is run those computations as efficiently as possible. And this allows us to also build confidential off-chain applications. 
so anyone can access this network, be it from an on-chain environment or be it through an RPC interface and build applications from the off-chain side of things. And this is very interesting because it allows enterprises to also use this confidential compute without having to care about blockchains at all. They don't need to write a smart contract or anything like that. They just need to trigger computations to be executed in this computational network. And one use case I want to touch on, um, which we have been exploring um, in recent times, is building confidential AI with Archeum. And we've made some significant breakthroughs in that regard. And the main hindrance for um, machine learning and AI applications combined with zero knowledge proofs, MPC or FHE, really has been the representation of floating point operations in those constrained um, computation environments. And what we were able to do is um, get an increased numerical stability to above seven decimal digits um, of precision. And we are running an hybrid approach, so we allow for both real number arithmetic, Boolean arithmetic, and garbled and arithmetic circuits at the same time. And um, what we are using is a modular lifting and truncation technique, where real numbers can remain represented as real numbers and don't need to um, be switched into a different representation, um, which removes a lot of the computational overhead in representing them in those kinds of circuits. And then um, we also use a uniform approximation of the sigmoid function uh, via Fourier series in a given interval, which also allows us to remove a lot of the computational overhead while um, remaining um, precise enough. And um, combining this with a very fast sorting technique, we are able to have a very efficient um, ML pipeline. So out of the box, we are supporting a logistical regression, linear regression, or tree boosting um, and, and, and predictions. Um, in this pipeline, and so anyone can use isolated data silos, can train models on Archeum and run predictions in this execution environment without having to give the data to anyone. Um, yeah, and so what I want you to take away from this talk is that what we're working on is really that everything can be encrypted and anything can be computed on top of um, encrypted data. And step by step, we are moving towards this direction. And yeah, thanks for your attention.